Welcome back to a brand new video guys, my name is Tim in the Toy Tank King. We are back with a brand new video for you guys today and this video we're going to be doing another viability discussion video and uh, yeah it's been a while since we've had any changes on the VR. Uh, I think the last time there was a change was uh, what you call it at the beginning of the month and there were just some changes, uh, rises and some drops and basically after that anyone, I'm just going to be talking about some uh, ones that people have nommed on the viability rankings after the update so yeah if you guys enjoyed this uh discussion video leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more uh p content uh i also want to mention guys uh i was thinking of doing a ladder series believe it or not like i was just like uh unless i have any idea when I'm out of ideas for discussion type videos, I might as well just upload some sort of ladder games uh, with some teams. I feel like that would, I feel like you guys would like to see that. So yeah, uh, I, I even forgot what I was gonna say, guys. But yeah, uh, ladder videos, and I'll try and upload them. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. So basically, after this post uh, by Megazord on the first of December, we've had some nominations here. Basically, he had two posts just about uh the reasonings behind these changes but yeah after this we have uh the number one memo in the whole of smooth on uh can't wait to make a video on this guy but yeah no one beats the bug uh even if this like he just thinks he's right and like in normal circumstances you'll think he's a troll but because like he just doesn't feel like a troll at the same he feels like a troll and doesn't feel like a troll at the same time because i think he generally believes that bug types are the best and they're god tier but yeah he actually nommed silver valley bug for c despite the fact that it's unranked and wouldn't even be uh, c minus or d straight away uh so yeah here's his reasonings uh resist fighting dark and other types uh those other types i just feel like he forgot to even mention them because bug resist ground as well bug resist grass which are quite important as well uh, apart from fighting and and bug doesn't resist dark but yeah uh that's what he said mix attacker strat uh and i'm just thinking every silver valley form has the exact same stats why would you use bug over something like ghost or fairy or water or dragon pretty good speed uh silver valley is uh speed tier isn't too bad in this tier but yeah it, it's not completely bullshit what he's saying like th this ain't really that false flagship set of flamethrower surf air slash and memory attack super effective against more than 90 percent of the tier uh time to double check that time to double check that uh if you guys didn't know pokemon database.net has uh uh, tight coverage checker so you can actually see uh what do you call it what like moves are like are effective against certain ones so does the silver even get air slash i've never seen it use air slash in my life uh so surf yeah that's four. Oh, okay yeah it's still it's still decent coverage silver gets what i'm confused I know I'm supposed to be talking about this, but I'm like, what? He actually gets air slash? Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, so he's, like, good coverage, I guess he's trying to say. Seeing me versatile member of all teams, it's still a bug type, mono bug. Uh, oh my god, I can't even be bothered to even speak about this, but yeah. Uh, he nommed that for C, but that's not getting risen whatsoever so yeah trying to get the bug out of the way but we had to acknowledge his existence but anyways on to the next one which has sparked some sort of interest in this one which personally i don't really want but yeah um shanagans has norm slacking from ur to d and the thing is slacking used to be ranked at some point because of its like banded giga impact set and the fact that like it can actually hit something and kill something one turn and then truant just comes in and makes them one dog shit but yeah it, it could kill things before so he's talking about a banded set again because let's be honest try and make slacking hit as hard as possible with that really high attack stat but he's basically saying that slacking is basically shit in every uh like archetype of teams apart from stool and then basically uh slacking has a good matchup against stool uh and that's why it should be ranked and personally uh I don't, again there's not much justifying slacking being used like why are you slacking when stoutland can do the same thing and doesn't have a shitty ability like this like you can do damage to save like you can't hit ghost types like slacking can't hit ghost types it hits something it 
break something, then it's forced to swap out. And I'm just like, you're giving store, you're giving store momentum. Like you shouldn't be giving store momentum to do what it wants. But because of you swapping out, thanks to Truant, uh, the shit stability in the game. Uh, yeah, like just use Stoutland or Kangasan. They have pretty good matchup against Stool as well. Stoutland just click return and. It does solid damage to whatever comes in that doesn't resist it. Kangaskhan with spikes damage and it can chip things as well. But again, the, he's trying to make out that Slacking has 150 attack. No, 160 base attack. Hits harder than Stoutland. But again, there's still no reason to really use Slacking. And I don't think just because it beats one type of team it should be ranked. But uh, I want to hear what you guys think about Slacking to be honest because... Again, uh, most people would probably agree with me and say, what's the point of using Sakin when there's Stoutland and Kangaskhan and other normal wall breakers? Like, even Zangus to an extent. I'm not going to allow rather use Zangus than Slacken because disability makes it trash. But yeah, I want you guys to mention in the comments what you guys think. But well, anyways, uh, on to the next post by Tondas. Uh, he's talking about a lone executor rising from A to A+, and I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with this. To be honest, uh, just quickly going over what he says here. Uh, specs to accuse the last selection of special blanket checks. Yep, if you try and check a lunar executor, you still manage to get to it cured by Draco Meteor and uh, Leaf Storm just because it does so much damage. I'm just like a lunar executor just can actually just auto win games sometimes, you know, like not enough, like ever since the decline of Ferro Clef and there's been less fairy types in general silver valley fairy doesn't get used too much the fairy doesn't get too used too much again dragon is only resisted by steel and uh fairy so and our steel types there's not that many good steel types like you can say bronze ore but a little executor click flamethrower and that's still taking a lot of damage and toge doesn't switch into Draco's at all like I don't know if it, it probably doesn't get who could, but again, a lot of executor has ways to deal with steel types. So yeah, there isn't too much actually stopping this one from actually being rampant. Like even the special defense checks that attempt to check it get uh two it queued, three it queued pretty badly, and and I'm just like this one is too dangerous. Whether it's it's specs uh spec set or uh what do you call it own trick room set, which I'm honestly preferring the own trick room set just because there's like just for me at least there's a less setbacks for it because with the spec set you click Draco Meteor and then let's say something like Lilligant comes in for free it starts setting up Quivenant and you can't really do anything and I've actually been in that situation a couple of times and it's just annoying to like going uh Dragonium Z or Gracium Z uh own trick room is quite nice as well uh I, I am preferring that right now but both sets are very very dangerous because it still just comes in clicks one move and things die so yeah i'm totally in agreement for this rising to a plus like this thing is just dangerous like I, I can't say anything else apart from that like it's typing also helps out defensively as well it's a good ground check good grass check like honestly this thing can beat litigant and like is good i honestly think it's good and uh, again ice weakness doesn't help but like there's fightings all over the tier that can easily complement the Lunar Executor and handle the uh, the Ice type. So again, I am in 100% agreement with Tom this year. Now on to Tasker, and Tasker does have a few noms that he has made himself. So we're going to go over every single one. The first one Tasker has said is that uh, Agron should drop from A plus to A. So he's basically said that, what do you call it? Uh, Agron has fallen out of favor to other wall breakers in the tier that uh what do you call it basically like a lot of wall breakers can obviously check Agron because of its uh medi very mediocre speed to e.g. Stoutland and Jellicent which uh Stout either clicks superpower and Agron dies, Jellicent clicks water spout without any setbacks and yeah you can't do anything and uh to be honest, a lot of things have been prepping for Agron as well. Like I think the meta has adapted to seeing choice band Agron. Like the amount of things that are starting to run HP ground or HP fighting now to actually combat this Pokemon, and even like HP ground especially because again, Scun Tank's one of the most com uh, common Pokemon. Guess what? Its only weakness is ground. Agron's four times weak to ground as well. So a lot of things are running HP ground, and that just doesn't. Uh, Agron does not like taking HP ground from anything, especially with its really uh bad spadef uh but yeah 
Uh, I would say I agree with Tasker here. Like, again, my go-to physical wall breaker most of the time is going to be Stoutland just because there isn't too much setback from using Stoutland. Decent speed tier, only one weakness, and not much can swap into Stoutland's return slash frustration. But yeah, that's his first uh, nom here. Then we have Gerda, A-star to... I said A-star. Ah, uh, too much education. Uh, A plus to A. And what do you call it? Tasker does admit that dropping Gerda is a bit controversial, but his we uh his reasons are that uh Gerda is harder to build around apparently, and uh what do you call it? We need a water resist, and Gerda's not a water resist, especially from Specs Jellison. Like he's saying that Polyraph is uh getting a a bit uh more used, or he's actually using uh Polyraph more because again it can check rock and it does check Jellicent pretty well because of water absorb, and yeah, and what do you call it? Gerda does get abused by the special wall breakers in our tier, uh, bar Aurorus to an extent. Like, you don't switch into Aurorus at all, but uh, you mark punch it or drain punch it. Although in Executor, you don't do much to that either. That clicks Lee Storm Draco and you're dead. And yeah, and Clefairy's not around too much. So again, not too many uh, solid Spadef checks. And yeah, Gerda does struggle to handle them a bit. And again, even I didn't even read the sentence, but he mentions specs alone. Executor just bops Gerda, <clears throat> and uh, and other Pokemon just check it as well. Your typical Mesprit and your Oracurio Pom Pom and whatnot. But yeah, speaking about Oracurio Pom Pom, that thing's getting numbed as well. This thing has just gotten so much better. I don't, I have no idea how it's gotten so better. I've, I don't tend to use this mon, but I'm gonna try and use this mon more because it's is slowly slowly creeping up the viability rankings and getting so much more usage and it's actually a pretty successful mon like it is i've seen pom pom work very very well but i have not gotten around to use it properly but yeah uh pom pom checks grass types obviously because of its flying typing it checks <coughs> you guys have to realize electric flying is actually a decent typing because you're not weak to electric so you're not getting checked by revenge killed by Togen Mori that easily uh this thing sets up calm mind as well and th this thing is somehow like if you think about it, for the past like year or so like i've been playing pu orokuru sent to has always been the best orokuru form like it was a dominant it was the dominant orokuru form for quite a while and then people started using pom pom and uh pom pom has taken over uh orokuru sent to on that spot as the best orokuru form and like Obviously, Orokuru Sentu had its flaws of being a ghost type. It gets Pursuit Trapped. Weak to Ghost as well, weak to Dark. But Electro Flying is a better defensive typing. So, obviously, and it has a pretty good matchup against Stool. Uh, that's pretty good enough. It has Taunt. It has Sub. Taunt, I'm pretty sure it just beats Stool. Taunt, up, uh, up. Yeah, it just wins. The fact, like, good speed here as well. So, and it's actually pretty tanky when you go defensive investment. But, yeah this thing is monstrous right now uh should actually you should use it and i should use it as well now final um how many more noms does he have he has almost star quags and simis here so looking at almost star here uh a to a uh minus uh again a lot of people think almost star is bad not not really bad but like it isn't as good as it looks especially like in my opinion, like, even Kato was saying that, like, Kato straight up said almost was bad. And I kind of did see why he was saying that. Because, again, almost our speed is pretty bad. Even with a plus two uh, shell smash is revenge killed by Scarf Togi. It does a lot of damage, but, again, it's super hard to uh, set up. And it is revenge killed by a lot. You're weak to mock punch priority. Uh, you're outsped by faster Scarf Mons and yeah it's just pretty hard to use sometimes and uh um i'd rather use living as a self sweeper than almost just because it's a bit too slow but we cannot deny his damage like his damage is pretty solid and it does get checked by jellicent hard so uh even like plus two specs uh plus two almost start earth power jellicent doesn't want to be taking that but before then water absorb you just get ward and you can't do anything uh quagsire as well um he's actually known quagsire to rise again this thing unaware it just stands there and takes physical attacks uh from a lot of physical mons bar the really broken wall breakers <laughs> <laughs> stoutland and his only weakness being grass types but like i don't use quagsire a lot and uh 
Whether or not I think they should rise or not, I don't know. Because, to be honest, I don't see too much Quagsire. And I don't build balance too much. So, yeah. But he says Quagsire should rise. And the last one, Simise from C- to B-. And that's a whole, like, one rank increase. And, uh, again, like, a lot of people sleep on Simise. A lot of people say Simise is bad. My opinion on it is just decent. I, it can function, obviously. Uh... I think the best set is some nasty plot, uh, gluttony berries, uh, salak or, yeah, probably salak berry to boost its, uh, speed, because 101 base speed is actually okay, so you outspeed, the scarf is below base 100, e.g. to Gidamaru, uh, or Kareos, potentially, Primeape, and other scarfers, and, again, not too many fire type checks in the tier, surprisingly or not. After all of fire type check, uh, fire type mons have just disappeared. Nine tails, pyro, magmorta. Like no one preps for fire types as much anymore, cause the majority of them just think it's bad. It's either they're bad. It's either Kabaskin or Simisir, uh, or Rapidash or just more really niche Pokemon, or niche fire types in the tier. And even Turtonator and uh, what do you call it? Once Simisi gets in and it can do its job, it actually can be a threat. So, again, I will say to you guys, don't sleep on Simisi. Uh It's not the best mon, but, again, it can function. Uh, no fire type checks too much. So, yeah, the thing is free to click fire blast all of the time. It has the coverage to beat types that resist it. Like, uh, it has grass knot to beat uh, Regirock. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. But, good noms from Tasker here. Uh... We got Meepo next, and uh, Meepo, uh, he's got a controversial one here for one of his rises, but first let's talk about Ruth on Frost, which honestly I've been seeing uh, getting more usage recently, so let's just see what he's got to say here. So it says Ruth on Frost should rise from B plus to A minus, and obviously uh, by virtue of its uh, electric ice typing, it does have a good matchup against uh, grass types, it has a good matchup against ground types and water types in the tier as well. And it actually can do a lot of damage. It, it it does decent damage and it defogs pretty well as well. Again, I wouldn't mind this thing rising because, again, I think his best set is actually Scarf. Like, this thing can come in and revenge kill things. But unfortunately, Rock's weakness hurts it when it's trying to remove hazards. But that's just it, really. Uh, checks alone, Executor offensively, that's always a plus, I would say, to be honest. If you land Blizzard, that is. But if you don't land Blizzard, then it's rip. But yeah, convention conventionally you do check a load of executor on paper because four times weak to ice. Well yeah, uh the second one, uh Crossle, uh I remember my first uh viability ranking post when I started PU was Crossle and I was like, I'll let this thing rise because the Shell Smash set is pretty good, uh good old days. But now look at it now, it's unranked. Well yeah, he's nomin uh Crossle to be uh unranked so C minus or D. And I have actually seen this Set circulating around a bit like someone has mentioned to me rock record crossle with uh rock z crystal but uh he he thinks that people think it's a joke but he's actually been serious here uh this thing can do damage because rock record is a 150 base power move so his z move is going to be 200 base power it does get shell smash like caracosta and uh what do you call it almost the thing is even back then when i made my post about uh crossle shell smashing again i was told why use crossle and caracosta is better same thing applies here he's realized that uh what do you call it uh what do you call it uh people will try and counter it and say uh caracosta and almost do a better job because uh almost our hits way harder is faster caracosta has better defensive typing and better they both get sturdy, but most of the time you're running solid rock and Costa, and Costa has priority as well. But he has replays here. We're not going to look at those, but again, he nommed it, so we have to talk about it. Personally, I don't see much reason to use Crossle, uh, just for a one nuke when uh, you can get a faster Pokemon that does the job better and then has a stronger nuke. But oh well, that's just my opinion and then he has some drops that he wants to talk about puku muku to c uh, that's a uh, two ranks down but again people it's quagsire versus puku in terms of stool and people are choosing quagsire now just because it uh what do you call it quagsire can actually hit things and yeah quagsire can hit things isn't passive uh and what do you call it 
uh, ground typhoon is nice stab earthquake but pq only has its literal soak toxic recover and doesn't hit anything get shut down by taunt while quagsire can actually do you a bit of damage then mischievous and again i forgot this mon was even ranked because no one actually uses this mon shout out to it in dpp though because that thing's actually pretty solid but gen 7 is just quite forgettable uh he again he's just like there's other ghost types and better spin blockers uh sensu uh go i would rather use golek than mischievous like mischievous doesn't do anything uh jealous and sableye as well and haunter like there's just so many better ghost types is outclassed defensively and offensively by pretty much every ghost type you can think of haunter jealousant golek uh sableye to an extent spiritum yeah that's it really but good uh post from meepo here and then how many more do we have to talk about uh we got yogi's recent post today and we'll go and that'll be the last one we talk about then we have ooh hoo 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 seven here uh, i think i said three who's so yeah so he's first one he's not really he's not really numbing everything he's basically just agreeing uh do i have to really go over this uh no he's not actually numbing anything he's just disagreeing or, or agreeing with some of the posts which basically what i'm doing as well so yeah let's just go on to yogi's post here so yogi he's actually uh known the rules for a plus and the fact that the f thing went from a plus to a in the first place uh that clearly shocked him because he's like he's like what why did the mon drop and again he's like aurora still does what it always did or since it came to the tier, it's Choice Specs Blizzard. It just hits everything. And the lack of good ice resist. I'm not going to say the lack of people using ice resist or the lack of ice resist. The lack of, like, used ice resist is nowhere to be found, apparently. Because, and I agree with him here. Like, people rely on Toge and Maru to offensively check Aurorus. But number one, Toge never switches in in the first place. So, yeah. And solid ice checks, like... Again, bronze will get uh is a actually decent uh counter to a roost because you just don't touch it because earth power levitate you you resist its uh stab blizzard and and you resist its uh potential hidden power rock slash ancient power but bronze will is quite niche and to be honest I hate using bronze will. I don't want to use bronze will just to check a roost so yeah and what do you call it Yogi also says that uh what do you call it uh, it can still just uh, hit a Lola slash Aurorus is still my favorite core of all time and like that core does so much work and uh, what do you call it he's been saying that people use Spadef alone and Sand Slash as a ice resist because again if uh, quarter resist ice uh, ice steel typing and uh, what do you call it he's saying most people rely on offensive pressure to actually deal with Aurorus effectively or just flimsy uh resist eg to get a maru that they think that they can tank attacks well nope they just die as well and also something that he didn't really mention as well checks eggy pretty well assuming that there's no trick room up and yeah outside of trick room spec sets get checked by specs Aurorus, not solid switch-ins and a lot of things drop like you two eq av electros i think and that's pretty that it's just it's always a lot of damage from Aurorus and it rising again there would be no problem with that because if uh a little executor rises then aurora should rise with it i'm just thinking logically that's how it should be but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this uh vr discussion video i just wanted to give you guys some content because it's uh, almost been a week and i was just like i need some ideas to make for a video and why not just talk about the new uh post for the viability ranking so i hope you guys enjoy uh this video and if you guys want to see more videos like this uh please just uh tell me to make more videos like this i actually do enjoy that again as i said at the beginning of this video i'm going to start a ladder series uh because uh I want to deliver more content to you guys, especially when I don't have any ideas for discussion videos. And I might as well just show you some of the teams I've been making and uh, go on ladder and test them. Even though ladder is not the best place to represent jack shit, but there's nothing else I can do. So, yeah. And while that video is going on, Megazard has uploaded P Circuit 2019. So, yeah, I'm going to go check that after this video. But, yeah, well, uh, yeah, again, guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.